early evening on this dairy farm in Victoria. Cold, damp, ideal conditions. The time is important. For best effect, the treatment must be between dusk and midnight, when the moon is in the right phase, when the planet Earth is ready. The spray will make the grass grow and will transform the soil. How it happens is beyond common thinking, beyond science. At first appearance, there's nothing to suggest this farm is anything unusual, and yet it is. The animals look the same, but they're not. Neither is the grass, nor anything that grows here. The people are different too. They think differently, and their ideas have many followers. Get up, come on then. Alex de Podolinsky and his wife Catherine have been in Australia since 1947. His ancestors were Russian, although he grew up in Germany. Come on. He is one of those rare people who profoundly affects. His followers worship him. Come on. His singular belief is that the future lies in the power of nature and in that alone. Here at Powell Town in Victoria, he leads a movement called biodynamics. More than just a method of farming, it taps a universal force so powerful that it supports all life. With biodynamics, the universe must remain in a state of order and harmony. That balance is called the cosmos. In that state, all the forces of nature are combined. Understanding and observing living things is the key. If I'm ever not in a good mood in the mornings, I very soon am, once I get near the cows, uh, they tell me exactly what I'm like. Um, they notice cosmic happenings. A cow relates to the whole environment. To live in harmony with your environment requires a purity, and that is definitely, it's just like the purity of a child. They live in the total environment, not just on the paddock and the farm, but far further reaching. They can teach a scientist where else to look if he's more uh, sufficiently sensitive to them. There's very little that happens on this farm that science can explain, or that is part of ordinary people's understanding. During Victoria's cold winter months, something strange takes place. The purpose of this dairy farm is not milk, but this. Cow manure is central to Alex's operation. Winter, when the earth breathes in, when nature is at rest, when winter forces are at their peak, a burial takes place in Alex's backyard. Cow horns filled with manure are carefully placed in the ground, layer by layer. They're covered with soil and left for three months. Something happens in this time a change, a transformation. The result is a substance that is no longer manure. It's called 500, and he believes it's the key to food production in the future. 500 is concentrated life force. So powerful, a tiny speck brings life to dead soil.
500 was the brainchild of Austrian philosopher Rudolf Steiner. He first described how cow manure could be transformed in this way to a group of German farmers in the 1920s. As a student in Germany, Alex was greatly influenced by Steiner's teachings. He mastered the technique and brought it to Australia. All these bags are filled with cow horns, thousands of them collected from abattoirs. Every one of them is filled with cow manure, ready for burial. We start putting the horns down in April. We have time until the 21st of June. And there are a lot of them. 130,000 we put down here, and then um, that is the, the biggest lot put down in any one place, but there are others making 500 too. 130,000 cows? Yes, yes, it takes a while. Each one has to be filled and each one has to be emptied. Why cow manure? Well, we have to look at the animal cow um, in comparison to other ruminants with several stomachs, uh, like sheep or goats. The typical cow stands there and chews her cud. Her legs are not meant to gallop round on like a horse's. The cow is steady, calm, placid, harmonious, a cosmos of nature. Her digestive system is the most refined on earth. The manure that comes out to 25% is microbes that enrich in the soil, enliven the soil. Would it not work in uh, any other sort of container? In fact, it doesn't. Um, it was strange uh, to the first scientists and farmers to whom Rudolf Steiner made that suggestion, but all subsequent practical experiences and tests have proven that. We have done tests bearing side by side with a cow manure, the same manure, uh, with a cow horn, the same manure in a wooden box or in a, in a porcelain uh, cup, and the result is not the same. Side by side, few inches apart, it, the manure does not convert the same way into the same substance as 500 is. What is it about a cow horn? That, uh... Well, if you look into a cow horn, when it's really washed and clean, you look into it, uh, you have the impression you would get stuck into it if you fell into it head first. You couldn't come out again. It's, so to say, on the cow to hold in what is going on in this magnificent cosmos of digestion, of metabolism. Um, deer, for instance, have antlers, and they reach out. That's exactly the opposite to, to a cow's in expression. And the deer um, communicate all the time in, in, a, in a state of alertness with uh, for, with a certain amount of fear in the background with nature, it's the exact opposite to what a cow is. The placidity, a mature cow, we know very, very well she has horns on, and for some reason or other, later on we cut the horns off. The cow will go dull. It's never the same as when she had horns on. A certain amount of strength, of character that is inside the cow seems to waft away, it's not held in anymore. That is something that one can very clearly experience. So, um, this unique vessel of, of nature um, is the most suited for this purpose. That is, is uh, our practical experience. Why do you have to put them in the ground? It is the winter forces that the horns have to be subjected to. For that reason, this area here in a very cold part of Victoria is the most suited in Australia I have seen. It's cold and, well, 
earth it has a strong pull, it drags uh, when it is lacking vegetation and, and that earth pull is what actually this, these horns are subjected to. The result of nature's power, a material nothing like it began. Sweet smelling, doughy to touch. Conventional science agrees it is a concentrated bacterial life form, but has no explanation for its real power. There is enough 500 on this table to regenerate thousands of hectares of dead soil. A little bit like that, one and a quarter ounces. If sprayed out correctly, will change the soil of a whole acre. This little bit can do it. It can't be understood in the way that the few minerals that are in here would cause that immense change. We must understand this as a force akin to, it's a negative description, akin to a speck of matter in atomic fission that can cause an enormous explosion. This is the key point to changing dead soils that have been polluted um, where nothing will grow anymore uh, into uh, abundantly active soils full of worms with a beautiful structure uh, producing healthy food. Can you explain the actual process that has occurred? Um, actually, it is very difficult to explain that. It happened in Earth at a time when it's so cold that the microbes can barely be active. Often the soil temperatures here are below 42 degrees. How this can transubstantiate, I would have to say, um, under those conditions, science cannot explain, but it happens. Scientific understanding or not, a million acres of food is grown in Australia using nothing but the biological bomb, 500. There are hundreds of farmers, hard-bitten, practical people who farm this way. These men are all biodynamic farmers. They use no fertilizers, no chemicals, and they have been doing so for up to 16 years successfully. Yet very little is known about them. In the past, they have kept to themselves, fearing ridicule of their method. Today, they're confident, they're successful, and they're growing in number. Alex visits every biodynamic farmer in the country at least once a year. He is very much their leader. Come and I'll just show you this soil here. Forry McDougall's family have been here for five generations, a large irrigation farm in northern Victoria. You'll see how tight it is. Hard, there's been, there's no moisture on the surface, but yet, see how healthy the plant is. See, this, the roots are going straight. Ten years ago, he was facing ruin. The roots are on the surface. His land was overworked, his soils dependent on fertilizers. Meeting Alex changed all that. Before the 500 was applied, the roots would just spread out on the surface, as you know. It's so different. The plant is so healthy. Soil is the basis for any future feeding of mankind. If our soils go downhill as they've been going downhill in the last hundred years, um, there just won't be uh, sufficient healthy food to really maintain mankind. Tori's story is an impressive one. 
his own farm was saved and three years ago he bought another one. A large rice farm, run down, abandoned by its previous owner, it was little more than bare dirt. Today the property is unrecognisable as the place Thorry bought, except for one corner. They said I was mad when I bought it. But give us a bit of time and this will be like the rest of the place. It wasn't the best impression that anybody could get of a property. But I knew that it had its potential. One man said to me, you're... I thought you'd have had more brains than to buy a place like that. But he did come back to me a couple of years ago and he said, well, I'll take back what I said. You've proved what can be done with that property. This is the only place in Australia where rice is grown completely naturally. Most use 23 different types of chemicals. With biodynamics, none of them are needed. It's not an easy system to understand. The methods used have no parallel in conventional thinking. 500 is quite different to anything else. The way it's made is strange enough. Applying it, even stranger. A machine is used to activate the 500. The material has to be stirred in water in a particular way before it's sprayed onto the ground. A suctional force is created by a vortex, drawing in power just as the planets are drawn by the force of the sun. As soon as it's created, the machine reverses destroying the vortex, leaving confusion and chaos. A chaos is important, even if people may not have recognized it in our own lives very often. Um, every artist, really creative artist, is in a state of chaos before he creates whatever new is to come. And when he is in that chaos, he might not even know is it going to be in written form, uh, is it going to be sculpture or painting? But he is in this, to the environment, unbearable state in which something generates. In music, there is one choir in, in Bach's St. John's Passion where the increase, chaos after chaos, is just hmm, 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 one on top of the other, um, it's a, an immensely powerful um, uh, choir, and that is exactly what happens here. Conventional farming often ignores nature as a living process. Alex believes that every living thing has a reason for being the shape that it is. That there is a formative force that dictates form and expression. In conventional farming, we have had um, 
terrible effects on on grazing land, on on arable soils, wherever man has farmed. Uh, Overgrazing is is a thing where all the time grass is nibbled, stock is there continuously, grass is nibbled down, never allowed an expression, never allowed to come to its own form. It's nibbled again and nibbled again. In consequence, the roots become shallower and shallower and shallower. When it's dry, they, the roots don't go down deep enough where there is still water. Uh, you can totally ruin country that way. In biodynamics, plants are allowed shape and expression. Trees or grass, every living thing. It's part of the way a farm is run. The belief goes further. If a plant is tampered with, even for practical reasons, some other inherent quality will suffer. If you prune trees a tremendous amount and give them a shape that is unnatural to that particular tree, that tree will never be quite healthy. It's like um, binding up your feet like it was done in China or the head in some places and you haven't got your normal physical expression, well you won't be a normal being. So is it when plants haven't got their formative forces picture totality right. Given all that, yes. what is the single important point that you're trying to achieve with your method of farming? Uh, in relation to work to with the life in the soil, the life in the plant, the total life of, of cosmos and, and nature, instead of just working with a few minerals. That is the major difference. of nature and the cosmos involves much more than transformed cow manure. There isn't a pest, a plant disease or a soil deficiency that can't be fixed by some natural ingredient. One of them is dandelions. Every year Alex's wife Catherine collects them for the purpose. Nature provides many others. The bark of oak trees, nettles, the powder of quartz, many more, all of which are used for particular purposes. Just like the cow manure, they too are transformed, each in a different way. This one here, that I have in, in, in this jar, is um, prepared in a another very special way, not like 500. It is made of these dried, specially selected dandelion flowers. And look, you could not tell what this preparation was made of. Is it possible, though, for you to use these preparations so that you never have to use any artificial stimulant to the plant? Like yes, very definitely. Well, say, on my farm here for 24 years, nothing has been used that was bought from outside. Um, all the growth you see uh, is based on these preparations. Um, a very uh, special one is this here. That was actually quartz crystal originally. It has been made into powder that is absolutely as fine as flour. Uh, we call it fiber one. Being silica, it stimulates the light forces, the light metabolism, the light intake of plants. Well, I have totally stopped brown rot in cherries by applying this spray, which uh, I have the power of a sculptor to change a sloppy plant, um, too full of water in the leaves, um, subject to brown rot into a plant uh, that is crystalline as though we had had a long dry spell and no brown rot would be possible. I can create that sort of condition inside that plant and surrounding it so that I can stop curly leaf and, and brown rot, uh, which is a, a wonderful thing without using any, any chemicals. It's not easy to become a biodynamic farmer. There's much to understand about simple things. 
the making of the preparations, the notion of a formative force, the power of the cosmos. Even the time of sowing is determined by the position of the moon and the planets. Lettuce should be sown when the moon acts as catalyst for a zodiac sign that is in the watery range. The watery part of the plants are the leaves, the airy part are the flowers, the heat part, it takes heat to seal, uh, to form and seal seed. Whereas if we sow potatoes, say, we would go for the earth, earth sign. It's a total cosmology, and after all, Earth is part of a cosmos. Earth is the planet, and it interrelates with the other ones, and the plants are part of this whole process. And in a total org organic form of farming, all that must be taken into consideration. I am deeply concerned, responsible as a primary producer, for food production that is healthy to people I'm equally deeply responsible that the soils in future will at least be as good as, as mine is now and will not all the time go downhill further and need more of this chemical application. They are so deprived of life, those soils. There are no microbes and worms. They are dependent on artificial feeding of the plants. And once you have that, the plants must be sprayed with chemicals. Um, the the incidence of chemical spraying increases every year, everywhere. And, and um, well, say in wheat uh, growing, 2,4-D is used very widely. That is the one half of Agent Orange. And the long-term effect of, of those hormones genetically and, and even on the health of the people using them is, is indescribable. I've seen photos of animals they, they are secret photos. I saw them in America um, of, of the genetic effects on animals in Vietnam uh, on account of the Agent Orange spraying. And uh, goats with, with three sets of noses on top of each other and eyes and one very big eye, only skin, uh, and the other one a wee wee little eye um, uh, and of course blind, uh, creations from hell you could say. Come on. It is vital that we actually do something about the soil and the way we farm, or I really am desperate as to our future on Earth altogether. That is what it amounts to.